Hey YouTube, AOD Prods here. So this week I decided to build a 130 scale foot turntable in G scale. This thing is huge. Uh, it's about five feet in diameter. And of course, the stuff that's commercially offered is pretty small, but I decided to go for something a bit unusual. Nobody really does a whole lot of late steam era giant turntables. Now in HO scale, Walters actually went and modeled this. They put out several turntables over the years that were 130 feet in length, which is about the size for a big boy or large articulated locomotive. Nobody's ever really done one in G scale. There's a few isolated examples out there, but none of them are really that common. I can only count maybe two or three of them out there so far, but I decided I really wanted a full on 130 scale foot turntable. And if you do the math in 129th scale, that's about just under five feet in diameter. So a very big turntable. I decided to basically scratch build this whole thing because there really is no commercially available uh, turntables in this size and G scale available out there. I know Eagle Wings made, I think, a few of these turntables. Either way, they're very hard to find or they're uh, very, very expensive. So I decided to go ahead and scratch build this one. So I started with the pit. I figured the best way to do the pit was to basically get a five foot diameter circle of track and then use the outer rail as an edge to lay the bricks on and as these photos show i'm digging out the the pit here making sure that it's completely level this part of the yard actually has a slight slope to it now that i've got the pit rail in there i'm going to start laying bricks in here and you can see the bricks are laid around the outer rail and then of course back filling it with gravel and putting ready cement in there. And so I went and did all the joints, trying to make it as uh, sturdy as possible. And then of course, I also put some along the edge between the rail and the edge of the brick. And again, I'm not using this track for any other purpose other than this turntable. So, I mean, it's okay if the, you know, cement gets on the outer rail because I'm not using it for conductivity. Now to provide a center bearing, later I'll go ahead and fit a, a slip ring connector, uh, which will have electrical contacts for the track on the bridge, as well as the motor for moving the bridge. But for now, I've just put a piece of PVC in the ground to mark exactly where the center bearing is. And then of course, the final step to this whole process is actually building the turntable bridge. So I had to get the measurements exact with regards to how far apart uh, to make the distance between the uh, edges of the turntable. Once I had that dimension, I went ahead and fabricated a rough wood mock-up of the beam, and I test fitted that, made sure it fit in the circle. And then I went ahead and started sort of detailing it, making the, the sides look more authentic. For the decking, I used 3 8 square dowel material and I think it's like pine or something like that. You can get it at Home Depot. And I went and just basically did half inch tie spacing, just over half inch. And I went and lined the whole thing with ties. They're about seven and a half inches wide to account for the beams that uh, the, the walking platforms on either side. This took a little bit of time because obviously you have to make sure everything's straight. And then um, on top of that, uh, I put the decking wood as well. This is about, I want to say, half inch wide by an eighth of an inch tall. Before I could do the decking material, I had to put the rails on. So I had some extra straight rail laying around, and I went ahead and got two pieces. These pieces actually aren't quite the length I had I needed for this bridge, so I went ahead and cut little extra sections, and then, of course, screwed them together with the little track screws that they come with. And then I ended up putting the rails on the bridge, and I... Um, I came up with a pretty good dimension as far as how the rails need to be spaced in terms of what the width is. Again, my methodology for hand spiking track is basically do one rail, get that one straight, and then do the other rail. And actually, before I even nailed them down, I put a center line on the bridge, and then I marked how far apart the rails needed to be equidistant from it. You know, this is just to make sure everything is straight and looks, you know, isn't all crooked. When I started, I did one every five ties. And uh, once I got the one rail and the other rail in, then I started going through and doing all the ties. It's a very laborious and tedious process. Angling the nails is how you really get a good effective clamp down on top of the rail edge. It's really kind of a lost art. There's not a lot of people that hand lay their track these days. 
quite an interesting process, but it results in something that looks really, really nice. So once I got all that done, I went ahead, test fitted it again, got some photos of it. And of course I started making the bridge contact piece in the center. And then of course I went and started painting it, staining it. I decided to stain the deck because the deck is just too nice. The wood grain is too pretty to just paint black over it. So I decided to go ahead and put a nice red oak stain on it, you know, to really bring out the wood decking. And then once I did that, I flipped it over and painted the bridge portion because uh, obviously that's just metal. So I went and painted it black. The next steps I have on it are to fit the center bearing slip ring connector, which will have all the contacts for the motor and track contacts. And then of course I have to make the motorized guide roller. Now there are a total of four guide rollers, one in each corner obviously, and I'll have to have one of those be powered I'm planning to use a 60 RPM motor to provide power for it, which will result in it moving. I, th I think it'll move pretty slow, you know, because obviously it's on the end of the bridge. So it'll at 60 RPM, it'll, it'll be creeping along, which is fine. I don't plan to have any indexing controls or anything like that. That's just too complicated. I figure, you know, the thing will be moving slow enough that you can very easily get it lined up with a track. And it's basically just gonna be 12 volts DC, you know, reversing polarity to switch the motor direction and that's it. And then of course, track power will be fed through the slip ring connector. So that's basically my plan for this uh, turntable. And of course, after I uh, completely finish the turntable, then I'm gonna be moving on to the roundhouse, which is a whole separate thing, which obviously that'll take some time to build. But again, I'm basing the design of it off of the Walther's Cornerstone kits that I have. I do have an HO scale Walther's Cornerstone turntable. I also have a six stall roundhouse plus a machine shop. I'm basically planning to kind of base it off of that. So yeah, that's this build so far. Uh, it was a total of three days from start to finish, uh, which again is pretty quick. It's uh, fun building these kinds of projects and uh, if you uh, have the chance at build scratch building stuff in G-Scale, especially in 129th, it's kind of a rarity, but it's also a lot of fun, so I'd highly recommend it.